Let's bring in Richard Deitch, who covers women's college basketball for and the media for uh, Sports Illustrated. Uh, let me start with that aspect here. The, the media, this wasn't a big story yesterday. Dan, it's good to talk to you. First of all, I, I just want to say, in an often cynical, prepackaged world, um, what I saw from Boston yesterday, and you talked about this, um, that was one of the most inspiring things I've seen at a sporting venue in a really long time. Yeah. Uh, and like you, I was, I was really touched by that. In terms of Griner, you know, you make a good point. The, the reason this is not newsworthy, in my opinion, is because it's tempered by the history of previous women, high-profile sports people, who have come out. Cheryl Swoops, Billie Jean King, Shamiqua Holtzclaw, recently, more recently Megan Rapone. They, they're pioneers for Brittany Griner, and they, I think, have acclimated our sporting culture to this. So when Brittany Griner, who absolutely is you know, arguably one of the 10, 15 most famous female athletes in this country, makes this announcement matter-of-factly, it is mitigated because there are there are pioneers in this space before Brittany. Then we may be in this position ten years, fifteen years down the road with men's uh, you know athletics uh, with professional athletes and somebody coming out. You know, I'd like to think that, but I don't, and I, I hope that's not a cynical take. I, I think we have a long way to go when it comes to men in team sports coming out and this and it not being a big deal. And part of that is, I think, just how men are raised in this culture, what, especially when it comes to the NFL, represents uh, to our ethos. Um, so I, I w I'd like to believe 10 or 20 years from now, especially if, if many more athletes come out, the story won't be front page New York Times kind of thing. But, you know, if, if these athletes, and I think all of us have sort of been hearing that we're, we're going to see some athletes, probably some NFL people coming out in the next couple of months, I, I cannot see how that's not going to be leading every newspaper in this country, leading Sports Center, you know, leading NBC Sports. It, it, it's still going to be a major, major story. Yeah, and I'm trying to figure out, is it that uh, the men, whether athletes or the media, we have no problem with women who are gay. But we have a problem with men who are gay, or at least that is the perception that you can't be. You know, we don't we don't approve of that. We 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 we, we look at the sports aspect of it, the sports they play. Uh, it, it's it's sort of a weird uh, relationship that we have, or connection, or lack thereof. That women, fine, I'm okay with that. But two guys, no, I have a problem with that. Yeah, it, listen. Probably part of it is because women are more evolved than men, I would say. And then secondly, <laughs> it's just – it's part of this culture, this entire culture of, you know, of men having to be, quote, unquote, strong, you know, men not necessarily talking openly about sexuality, the idea that you're looked upon if you're a man in this country and young, especially young with money and an athlete, the idea that you should be with women and beautiful women and sometimes multiple women. I think the whole attitude has to change. And to me – the only way these attitudes change, change, the only way that we see attitudes change is significant high profile team athletes in important male sports in this country come out and the public is, they, they just get used to it. They just get used to the fact that, hey, if I love the Cowboys, you know, my quarterback may be gay, my running back may be straight, but I don't care. I'm just rooting for both. Now you're just using that as an example. Yes, I, okay. I have no, yeah. I have no, I have no, uh, okay. I have no breaking news about uh, the Dallas Cowboys or any other NFL team. Will Brittany Griner embrace this? I think so. You know, Griner's a really interesting kid. She's, um, she's goofy. She's funny. She's the exact opposite of prepackaged. I'll give you, you know, Skylar Diggins is someone who's a big time NBA fan. You know, if she met Carmelo Anthony, you know, she'd be just in bliss. Brittany Griner gets. Uh, uh, loses her mind when she meets like Tony Hawk. She's just a different kind of kid. You think she's a six eight, all basketball all the time, but she's not. She loves skateboarding. She loves video games. She, she once told me like uh, you know one of the greatest moments of her life was when uh, I think it was Call of Duty that video game yes. came out, and she waited online <laughs> for like five hours. So she's just a different kid, yeah. and I think she's going to be fine with it. And that was what was great about that Maggie Gray interview. And Maggie did a really good job. It was no big deal to Brittany. She's just like, this is me, this is who I am, and hey, you like me or you don't like me, but, but listen, this is, who I, this, is, this is what I'm about. Richard, good to visit with you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Dan. Richard Deitch, uh, SI senior editor, media writer, covers women's college basketball.